got to. Um, apologies. Shame, shame, shame. Um, because you know what? We're nearing, we're nearing a thousand videos, and I want to uh, make oh, a. There we are. I want to make a clips video for a thousandth video. I don't know. It's gonna be a pain in the ass though. But it depends how how much care I put into it. Hello, welcome to Talking to Fans People. I'm host Eric. You're with host Zachary. Fans People Ben and Sarah. Not Sarah, whose name at the top of her square is not her name. All right. So, Zachary, can you? Uh, Begin this conversation here while I step away for a moment. Sarah, what is the purpose of an individual who exists within a political society? What should what what are their what's the purpose of, of uh, what what should they be held accountable for in regards to the society they live in? Um. Do they have any? Yeah, I think everyone's born with a purpose. I think everyone's given natural, God-given, well, for me, since I believe in Christ, I would say God. If you're not, you know, whatever that may be, that's your, you know. Um, but, yeah, I think we're all born with a set of talents that um, we've been given since birth, and I believe that it's our purpose in life to learn how to use those talents and then in life uh, discover what you're good at utilize those talents and then to help other people throughout society that you know may need your or use your expertise mm -hmm. what about you Ben? oh man um, we, we just kind of went from the, the last video the existential kind of purpose but now it's like what about your the purpose of like talents and the like and, and abilities you think we have an obligation to use those to further a society? Uh, I mean, to answer that easy, yes, but that's essentially not only it's not you're not you're not. I feel like the goal is more intrinsic, in which you're trying to benefit yourself, like vicariously by benefiting others. Like I think that's a byproduct. Mm -hmm. Like, but I don't think that's necessarily the goal of. It's just kind of a thing that happens. I agree with what he says, yeah. Does that cheapen it in any way? Does it matter whether your motives are truly altruistic or whether they're individualistic? Wait, is that cheap? Is that what you said? Does that cheapen it? Does it matter if your oh. motives are truly altruistic or if they're individualistic? or does, does, does the distinction matter in terms of the value of the thing? Um... No, I would I say yes. So. I would oh. say yes. I, why, I think, why do you say yes? Because I think, uh, well, first of all, to even develop within a society, you rely on pro-social behavior, altruistic behavior, for your own development, and everyone be, sort of becomes a part of that. Uh, as they develop, you kind of adopt the altruistic values from the people around you and from Europe, and it all kind of it needs the pro-social behavior for everyone to kind of coexist together. If it was completely individualistic, then there wouldn't be, at least it wouldn't be as strong as a bond as if it was all altruistic. But it starts with the individual though, and then it's up to that individual to kind of go from there and then bring other people to see their vision, if you know what I mean. So it may start from the individual but then to end with the individual, I guess, going about in the way of I'm doing this for me and I'm not really doing this to benefit anybody else. Okay, that could work too, but that wouldn't be the best route to go because then what are you really doing for society? And it's not like we have this like obligation, or do we? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Eric, do you think we have an obligation to, to further our society through pro-social behavior? Um... Well, give me, give me another minute here. I'm not quite ready to come back onto this yet here. So um, I, the short answer is no, but we need to understand obligation as meaning the strict limit of what we must do to be decent human beings, not the ideal standard that we would meet, right? So 
ideally, meaning if we if we were to be worthy of praise, let's say, we would do more than the minimum. I would not say we're obligated to be altruistic, though. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on this, Ben? Really, I mean, I'm kind of in agreement. Kind of makes sense. With, with, uh, with Eric? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think we are in an obligation to do so, uh, because that kind of... Actually, I don't know. I think I think we did. I think I'm gonna say I'm gonna like to claim that we are kind of obligated to because we re, we require the the altruistic behavior of individuals that already exist in the society to even develop. So I think it's it's important for the individual. Well, but I require to, oxygen. That doesn't mean I re, I I have an obligation to produce it. That's a very good point. That's I, a good point. I have to come that's, back for that. That's a good point. Yeah, that's the argument changes that shit like, on. Ways, man. Like, Eric's... Yep. Well, I, uh, the thing is, remember, I do... Uh, I have to come up with arguments yeah, for this but, stuff no, for, for a living, you know? But oxygen doesn't require... Uh, does... Uh, no, it kind of does. It's just an analogy. The point is, though, we want to be precise, in my opinion, about obligation because... If we want to say we're legally and morally obligated to things for something, I, I think ideally those would be the same two things. The law would follow one's moral obligations. But the only way you can do that in a just fashion is to have the only obligatory behavior be the respecting of negative rights. Uh, and that everything else being either perhaps highly advisable or highly inadvisable or, you know, looked down upon or not, but it has to be permissible or or you're violating someone's negative rights. And it's, in my mind, that's the framework to embrace because it's, it allows a clear, distinct, prescriptive path forward. It says what the government can do and can't do. It says how we ought to think about the world as we go about, go about it. I was reading an article in the paper today that said, you know, now, if you make over blah, 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 and it's like, like $250,000 or something, and your total tax is, let's say, $50,000. Mm -hmm. And then they proceed to talk about this thing, blah, blah, blah. as though that were perfectly normal and natural. If we were to think about our place in society as, as we should, as individuals who are autonomous beings with rights, then we'd wonder, now there are, gosh, there are almost 400 million of us here and your job is to have protect us from being attacked by other countries and to provide roads basically and you need there's 400 million of us and you need fifty thousand dollars from me this year how are the government we're the government I need fifty thousand dollars from you as your share of the tax burden wait but Eric, as that person giving the fifty thousand, I should have that right to say I don't want to give you anything. What if uh, I don't support? You know look, what I'm saying? taxation of the sort that's currently implemented is, in my opinion, absolutely not. There are no moral justifications for it. There is no yeah. limiting principle constraining the use of that legislative power in a way that suggests it is just, equitable, or fair. The progressive tax is fundamentally, uh, it, it's a disaster. If we just had a flat tax, would we have all this? How much money is wasted on tax preparation and filling out forms and how much time is wasted on that? And have, hiring a whole IRS to audit people to see if this deduction or that deduction was properly done. Why? Because we have a progressive tax. You know, I mean, and even, even that, it shouldn't be any income tax. They had to pass a constitutional amendment to allow it. Amen! the work out of my mouth. We've got plenty of taxation possibilities in terms of sales tax and other sort of, I mean, really, ideally, you'd only have the government taxing um, at the manufacturing level or at yeah. the import-export level. Even then, I'm, I'm a little wary about it. Believe me, you don't want the government taxing the shit out of businesses, for God's sake. But, um, 
but the, you know there needs to be some some layer uh, between the um, the government and the soft underbelly of American stupidity because Americans will vote for things they'll become so inured to this notion of, of mass theft that after the, even when you read an article it says and so let's say your share of the tax burden is fifty thousand dollars well how the fuck can my share of this road be fifty thousand dollars yeah that makes no sense. Hmm? I'm sorry, say again? Oh, I was just going to say, what I'm interested in is, um, I mean, obviously this sort of system has kind of evolved, you know, for, like, you know, since the, since the foundation of America. And that, like, say, like, the younger generation today, like, it's oh kind of just, like, jumped into the middle of all this that, like, it's kind of hard to, like, even gain an opin a, a relevant opinion of to make decisions. Hard. Like, I feel like I need to do more research personally to see like what sort of policies enabled the enabled us to get to the state of like taxation, you know, based on income and all that shit. I mean, I'm just kind of speculating okay. what I let's, can. Uh, let's go back to the negative rights basis for like prescriptive moral foundation, right? So that would be like the non-aggression principle. Is that what you, that kind of what we would apply that to? Yeah, everybody has a burden of non-interference. Everybody else's negative rights confer upon them a burden to not interfere with somebody else's shit, basically, at all. You can't. That means you can't violate their property rights in any way. You can't punch them because they own their body. You can't steal their shit because they own it. You can't stab them because they own their body. You can't rape them because they own their body. You can't do any of those crimes that we are actual crimes. You can't do because they either own their body or they own their stuff. And that is fundamentally why you can't do it to them. So let me get this right. Like, um, so, uh, for example, a descriptive foundation for morals would be like utilitarianism. Is that correct? Well, util could be either descriptive or prescriptive, depending on whether you want to include a predictive element into it. So if you're using util as a way to adjudicate a possible choice, what's the better outcome? is what you'll ask. You'll say, well, which is likely to produce the fewest deaths and protect the most lives or produce the most money and and, and cost us the least in terms of resources and time or whatever your, your cost-benefit analysis is, depending on the given policy question in, in question. So you can make util prescriptive, but you have to make predictions. You can... Right. Deontology is both descriptive and prescriptive, as is a negative rights framework, which is basically a form of deontology. So, um... Zach, where are you getting it? from? What did you say? Where are you getting the questions from? Are they just, like, questions off the top of your head? Yeah, I'm, uh... Well, I'm trying to think, okay, so... Having the, um... The kind of, like, negative rights basis or negative rights framework as a moral foundation what other what, what other moral foundations can you think of that would be that you could throw into the political sphere so to speak well I think you want to separate everything off from that so you go now look here are that's why we want to define obligations carefully you say you we are all obligated not to violate anyone else's negative rights none of us are obligated to fulfill another's positive rights except insofar as we are contractually obligated and even those contractual obligations need to have clear and distinct limits because the capacity to obligate others is the capacity to enslave and um, mm. it needs to be limited so con contracts are in the current status quo too powerful and they should be cut back some um, but regardless of that we need to be discussing, in my opinion, on the national scale, there needs to be, every political discussion needs to be framed through this framework if we want to be honest about it. Because right now, people are advocating violence using words that would suggest the opposite. They don't know they're advocating violence. They don't think they're advocating violence. They'll say they're not advocating violence, but when pressed on the actual, when pressed upon the actual warrants to provide responses that are meaningful and to say, no, here's why you were wrong, Eric, they are unable to do so consistently, time and time again. Uh, so, give us an example of something that, that would. Uh, are you referring to like taxation? Is that what you're referring to something that would, kind of, um, 
encourage violence, but not... If you're behind redistributed properties, for, uh, for, uh, if you're behind re redistributed policies, you are advocating in favor of violence. You are advocating a theft at gunpoint. That's what you're advocating for. Because redistributed policies suggest that there is a set amount of wealth in the nation that ought to be divided up amongst people. And that, oh. and that if somebody has a lot less than somebody else, it's unfair because they didn't get their fair of the pie. In reality, wealth is not a pie the nation has. It is a series of little mounds of dirt that pile up because somebody digs a hole. Now, if I'm an effective hole digger and I happen to find some good ground, I look around really carefully for some good ground, and I dig really hard and really fast, and dig smart too, don't dig stupid, then I'll get a big pile of dirt around me. And if I don't choose to be a big digger and I don't want to dig a bunch, fine. There's no reason why you have to value having a bunch of dirt around you. You don't have to value that. But don't expect others to compensate for your choosing to value something that's less practically that's less practically useful. You know, so that's okay. that's the problem. You know, that's it goes problem. it goes with the um, equal opportunity, but then equal outcome. We don't want equal outcome. That, you can't have it. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. You can't have it without killing everything alive. Living things compete with one another. It's what they do. They cooperate too. But the notion that we can compel individual agents, individual moral agents, who have their own moral culpability to make their own decisions and to live with the outcomes of those decisions, to be accountable as well as free, the notion that we can impose upon them a set of restrictions that require them to forsake their property rights, the notion that the government can make a consistent ownership claim upon our bodies and the efforts of our labors is obscene and absurd. Mm-hmm. Literally everything you just said, like, that's pretty much... But then, Eric, Eric, how do you get the younger generation to see that? This is common sense. This I don't think they're not seeing it. I don't think they're not seeing it. I think, listen, in general, I think people move towards, people necessarily move towards liberty as long as we can continue to engage people in dialogue. When I argue with people, they may leave that argument hating me. Sometimes I beat up on people on Facebook who are like friends of friends who have the misfortune of not knowing what they're getting into and comment yeah. some stupid liberal yeah. claptrap on my fucking post and then I gotta tear them to pieces, right? Because they have no defense for it. When they go like, me, me, I'm like, you don't even know what the word right means. You don't know that any def you don't have in your head right now any definition of the word right and you are talking about it as though you do. Oh my gosh. Eric, you're ENTP, you're a true ENTP like I am. How do you are you, like, how do you deal, because I run into that a lot, even with my own family, and it's something that, like, I'm still dealing with now, is learning when to walk away, because, you know, I keep telling myself, you can't You're walk asking away. the wrong guy. Well, because you can't, <laughs> well, I mean, you try to use logic and reasoning with certain people, and it's like, it's like they're not, it's like they're there, but they're not there. You know, people ask me, they go, they go, oh, when are we going to have a zombie apocalypse? I'm like, dude, there's not going to be an actual zombie apocalypse, but there's going to be an apocalypse where, like, I mean, you could ask me. You got to get over convincing people. That's the bottom line, the answer to your question. It won't, all you'll do is, all you're doing is banging your head against the wall. That's all you're doing is banging your head against the wall for no good purpose. People won't be convinced by logical arguments if they're believing illogical things right now. It's for a reason. No, they use emotional reasoning for the basis of their decision making. It's That's not necessarily no wrong. No, it, I, it's not. It's true. This is a, <laughs> like, but, it's just so frustrating. Like, you don't understand. Like, I am so thankful. You know what? I'm just done. Because I'm honestly. <laughs> it's, it's right. Weird. It's right in a more narrow framework. It's, the thing is, people are right under more narrow frameworks, and they don't understand that the broader framework subsumes the more narrow ones and therefore should be preferred. That's the fundamental problem. Because if you say, well, you're wrong. We're kind of missing the point because I've spent years doing that. <laughs> and I still do it. I still do it all the time. I'm constantly, I'm Captain, you're wrong, you know? But it, it's not any usefulness to it. You say you're right in your narrower framework, but my framework subsumes yours is a more accurate way to put it. And it's more fair, I guess. And maybe it's more agreeable to people. I don't know. Well, well so that's what I was, that was kind of what I was asking earlier is like, to get to the, the framework you've settled on now, which to you is the most reasonable and logical. 
What other frameworks have you considered and discarded in the process? What other moral frameworks for the basis for government have you considered? Well, I've made the following arguments in terms of those frameworks. I've, I've argued in favor of communitarianism. I've argued in favor of an obligation that society has to take care of the poor, to, to advocate in favor of the poor, to engage in redistributive policies because fundamentally rich corporations have engaged in a persistent policy of exploitation against the poor so that any social welfare that they may receive is functionally reparations for harms already done to them by a societal injustice that's institutionalized in forms of violence and oppression that run deep according to class, race, and gender. And so we have a series of, of disenfranchised groups, each of whom require our intervention in order to make things equal for them. Otherwise, they will be unable to succeed, and it's not fair because they won't have an equal opportunity. The real, the real thing here is, you say it's about equal opportunity, not equal outcome, but that's what we're trying to do. You think it's equal opportunity for somebody who's poor, who gets bad education in public school? Bullshit. If they're in the ghetto and they're getting a teacher who's just saying, like, just let me get through the end of the day without things thrown at me today, then um, they're obviously not going to learn much. They're going to come out of there. They're, they're in what we call a prison to school, uh, school to prison pipeline. That's all that's happening in our inner cities. And the reason is because rich white people and corporations continue to exploit them. They keep selling their goods down there, but they're not providing anything back to those communities to help them thrive. Make all that kind of shit arguments, you know? It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Yeah. But, so, so when you say it's all bullshit, so you, you don't think they're... You, don't, you disagree with everything you just said? I didn't say anything. That's the problem. I didn't say anything. Just providing oh, information. Who are these disenfranchised groups? Can you point to them? Which which individual people are these disenfranchised groups? Oh, really? Can you point to the actual crime done to that actual person? And who's the actual criminal perpetrator? Which corporation did what to him? If he's a criminal, then let's prosecute his ass. I mean, let's prosecute his ass, not persecute him. Let's prosecute him. <laughs> um, you know, that that's my take on it. If you want to make these sort of broad accusations about structural violence and, and institutional uh, oppression, institutionalized oppression. And first of all, the solution to that is negative rights. Oh, are you telling me that somebody had their negative rights violated? Oh, I'm very interested in, in prosecuting that. Let's find the perpetrator. Oh, you're not saying that? Oh, you are saying that? Oh, you have no fucking idea what you're saying? That's because you're not fucking saying anything. That's why. Yeah. Right? That's why I get annoyed. <laughs> Well, I, th I think you're right. It's like uh, if there's, I think it's even exists now. Like if there's, it, if there is unequal pay because of someone's race, or, or, or if there's perceived unequal pay because of someone's race or gender or whatnot, like that's illegal. You go go to the police if that is happening. It's societally frowned upon. It's shameful. That's what matters more. The legality is irrelevant. When shit becomes shameful and people don't want us to do it anymore, you don't hear anybody anybody on the internet making openly racist comments because. It's too easy to take pot shots at them and, and get a cheap emotional payoff by, by calling out the bad guy for his bad shit, you know? People love calling out the bad guy for his bad shit when it's easy and safe. And they can go, oh, you're a racist, and you said something racist, and I don't like that, and you're bad now. Then they get to have that little payoff. Good for them. But that's not, that's the whole point, is it's, it's shameful now, and so you don't, you know, it's not, people, if, that, if you don't get to enjoy the awful, sweet taste of, like shared group hatred with other people, then it's of no good to you. <laughs> I don't. I, I try to avoid talking about politics. And I get ranty. I do talk about it a lot, anyway. No, I love it. I love it. That's how I get. Yeah, I've been following you, but. Well, uh, some people really uh, dislike it. I tell you that people hate politics. Eric, you're like the guy version of me. Well, like I'm telling you, like, I feel like I'm hearing, like, myself in a way. Do I do this? Man. Well, you probably read Reason. I, I haven't read it in a long time now, but I used to read it all the time. Um, uh, so, Ben, you don't, you're not as interested in politics. You generally don't find those sort of, you, you don't find me ranting my fucking libertarian rants particularly enlightening, huh, I'm guessing. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I, I have an interest that just, I don't know, I like the specific uh, circumstances rather than the general, you know, one thing, you know, please what another. What are your specific chances? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have he to. doesn't want to debate. He does not want to debate, Sarah. I can tell. To... you got to be able to read the, the, um, 
the person that's, uh, that's emanating to you in every possible way, all the waves pouring out of him saying, I do not want to debate. Yeah. Um, so, the thing about that is, a lot of people are not interested in politics at all. My ex-wife wasn't interested in it at all, but we got along fine. She voted right. for her, you know, whatever was the whatever was the solid everybody voted for person. That's, that's well, how she voted. You know? Talk about what did you what did you and your ex wife like talk about and like get along? <laughs> how did you guys well, relationships? I, I'm, I'm we talked about relationships. Same, I'm running into the same issue with the guys that I date. Like a lot of them, it's not. It's Eric. You know, I don't try to get into like arguments or debates. It just happens. But if there's a topic, right, you can be discussed. And it's like, I'm not going to walk away from something when something needs to be said, right? So they naturally they naturally take it as, oh, you're just trying to be right. Oh, you know, you, you, you have to win. The, Honey, if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Show me. But half these people don't even know what they're talking about. So it's like, just stop. You're a wall, and I'm done. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. So Eric, it, Oh, no, it is so frustrating. Oh. Like, last year, I used to be the kind of person that I almost gave up on humanity, but I've learned, no, 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 I've learned that that's not the case. There are still very good people out there, logical people, rational people that learn how you to You know what else there is, Sarah? I want you to think about this, too. There's candy. Oh. There's donuts. Mm-hmm. Oh. They're delicious. I, I, I have a big bag of candy in my fridge. When I start getting too fussy, I go, go, go for the orange slices, the refrigerated orange slices. Not actual orange slices, you know, the candy orange slices. The, the, gum, the squishy ones, you know? You hate those? Those are good. Do you like peach rings? Everybody likes peach rings. I'm not. I don't have a No peach rings? Ben, you like peach rings. Sure. No way. I don't have um, chocolate, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know we're kind of like going away from the politics talk, but just, uh, just a couple more questions. Um, so, uh, <laughs> this, so, so, I, I, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to identify the the different uh, various moral frameworks that we could operate oh, in our right. society in. But I don't well, think it's. It, it breaks down to so Util and Dion. It's just that it breaks down to they're either utilitarian justifications or it's deontological justifications, and everything in between is just a bunch of different shades. Yeah. Binary or sliding scale, that's it. Either have justifications that are measured in different amounts, and you can have piles that are bigger than other piles, and then you have utilitarian framework. Or you've got binary outcomes. Like it's either just or unjust, or it's either, you know, he's either innocent or guilty. Um, those are binary outcomes, and if you evaluate your moral frameworks or binary outcomes, you're taking a deontological framework, you do it through sliding scale impacts, or you're taking a utilitarian framework. The latter is inherently worse because it can't. It has to make predictions. Being right morally requires you to be right predictively about what's going to happen. So, uh, with, with regard to like libertarian uh, philosophy or political ideology, would you consider yourself a monarchist or an anarchist, and why? I would call myself a. Pragmatic anarcho capitalism. <laughs> Which is to say, if I were running for office and were going to be president, I would establish what positions I was going to take, and they'd be middle of the road positions. And I'd explain, I mean, they'd be middle between me and what normally people would think of as too libertarian. <laughs> so, <laughs> between those two spots, right? Not, not between, not middle of the road by other people's definitions, but not full blast Arab, okay? I would stake out positions that I would actually follow through on. I wouldn't go in further than that. I would follow through on my promise not to go further than that. And I would say, this is where I want to repeal government back. This is where I want to pull back. Right here, here, here. This is the first place I'm going to pull back. Time permitting and political capital permitting, I will then pull back here and here and here. And here's what I'm going to do with the money. And here's what I'm going to do with your money. I'd always, I'd always refer to tax dollars as your stolen money. There we go. There we go. So listen, I still have an obligation to spend some of your stolen money. I can't just return it all to you. It's just going to be impossible, guys. So here, nation, here's how I'm going to spend some of your stolen money. And here's what I'm going to do with the Here's the amount of stolen money I can return to you. I'd be happy to do so. Sorry we stole it from you in the first place here in the government. I apologize for on behalf of all these, of these immoral fuckers. 
<laughs> uh, well, you, you said a pragmatic anarcho-capitalist. Does that mean you, you're for the abolition of the state? Well, like I said, pragmatic. I, I think the state has a few specific roles it needs to fulfill. It needs to fulfill environmental regulation. I believe that's just because environmental pollutants are a way of imposing your harms upon others. And then, um, but I think there needs to be clear limits. It's got to, you got to be really cautious with that because they're going to run with it. They're going to call everything in the world environmental law. It's like, it's like fucking interstate commerce. Oh, we can't do that. Let's call it interstate commerce. You know, beheading people at random. It's okay. It's interstate commerce. Um, so we got to be careful with that. But I think the other thing they have a need to do is roads and other infrastructure like power lines and you know, uh, phone lines and stuff like that. And an army, but a small army, ideally not even a standing army. The federal government, I think, could get away with like a teeny standing army just to manage the stockpile of nuclear holocaust that we've managed to pile up for no good reason. And, uh, and then, basically, if we really have to go to war, then we can just nuke somebody. And, and if we, but they, they'd have to attack us. You know, who's going to attack us knowing that we could nuke the shit out of them? Fair enough. And we could sell all of our guns and shit to the Middle East, to the to the Islamists. Here, work faster. I already did that. <laughs> Here, this will help you work faster. No, no, guys, those little teeny guns aren't gonna do any good. You need some of these. You know what you need, ISIS? You need a battleship. But we need to only give it a, a little bit of gas range, like cut the gas tank in half or in quarter, so it can only go like a few miles offshore. They can just shell the shore with it. That's all they can do. <laughs> there you go. There's a tent. Yeah. Is this going on YouTube? Is this going on YouTube? Yeah. You post every conversation on YouTube. Uh, when I, unless I fuck up the video for some reason, which I often do. Remarkably often, I, I, which is insane. I, the last day I had this really good interview. It was so good. Mega Bro and me and Zachary was there too, right? Wait, you fucked up the whole thing. I have no audio on it. But I, the only audio I have is me. No, that yeah. was so good. I thought I you know. just been delaying uploading. No, Mega Bro finally asked me about it, and I shamedly, head head hangedly, oh, told no. him I fucked it up. But he said we could do it again. I, you know, he, he's not mad, so that's good. <laughs> we, we we went really in depth with like the the holistic paradigm and whatnot too, and how it like, interacts with cognitive faculties and. Zachary, stop torturing. Thank <laughs> you, Oreo. Say hi. Hi, doggy pogs. Is that a stuffed hi. animal for you, or a dog? That's a real dog. <laughs> it's a real doggy pogs. Well, Ben, what are you an ITP? Did we? Did we figure that out last time? Are you an ITP? Uh, it was inconclusive, I think. I don't know. I'm going ISTP. Take the test again. I, uh, when I know I'm taking the test, it just makes things so much more confusing. Um, listen, I'm going to stop this video and upload it right now, okay? So this seems like a good stopping spot. So I'm going to push Piao, and I'm going to push 